Woo! This girl starts cooking. Check it out. All right, let's see it. There's a lot of evidence that Jesus is God and that his claims are true and the things he says about himself are true. Jesus has fulfilled over 300 Old Testament messianic prophecies. There are absolutely no data whatsoever that demonstrate Jesus fulfilled any prophecy whatsoever, much less more than 300 of them. And trying to appeal to the New Testament as proof otherwise requires one presuppose the historicity, the inerrancy, the univocality of the New Testament, and the data flatly preclude all three presuppositions. Those are dogmas one must choose to accept over and directly against the available data. But there are three additional considerations that undermine these dogmas. One, when we look in the Hebrew Bible at these ostensible prophecies, some of them are not even prophecies at all, but are just discussions about things that happened in the past. The majority of them are prophecies, but they're prophecies about other things. For instance, prophecies about the northern kingdom falling by 722 BCE that gets reinterpreted as a prophecy about someone being born almost a thousand years in the future. This brings up the second problem. These prophecies are not being fulfilled by Jesus in the way they were originally written and originally interpreted. They're being fulfilled by Jesus according to the way they were being interpreted in the first century CE. They're being fulfilled according to the interpretation that was current after Jesus' death. And this brings up the third thing. The New Testament authors are all at liberty to tell their stories about Jesus in whatever ways they want, including in ways that have Jesus fulfilling prophecies according to those first century CE interpretations. And Matthew is the most prolific about this because most of the fulfilled Hebrew Bible prophecies are concentrated in the Gospel of Matthew because one of his rhetorical goals was to demonstrate that Jesus is the fulfillment of all these Hebrew Bible prophecies. And so Matthew tells stories that are found in other Gospels, but changes the stories precisely so that he can say, look, Jesus fulfilled this Hebrew Bible prophecy. So whether it's the virgin birth or the triumphal entry or the death of Judas or any one of a number of different prophecies that Jesus ostensibly fulfilled, the story is different in Matthew precisely because Matthew was altering the story to have Jesus fulfill the prophecy. And the probability of somebody fulfilling even eight messianic prophecies is one in 10 to the 17th power, which is one with 17 zeros behind it. So already the data don't support the conclusion that Jesus fulfilled any prophecies, much less more than 300. But this statistic is also a nonsense number. It was created by a man named Peter Stoner for this book, Science Speaks, originally published in 1958. This cover is from the 1963 edition. And when you look in the chapter entitled The Christ of Prophecy, you'll see a description of an experiment that Stoner did uh, across a number of different units of this class on Christian evidences that he taught for the InterVarsity Christian Fellowship at Pasadena City College, where he had undergraduates students come up with guesses about probabilities regarding the fulfillment of a series of eight prophecies. So this number is just based on the aggregation of a bunch of different guesses about probabilities that were generated by undergraduate students and then curated by Stoner himself. And the goal was very clearly to try to pump up the faith of these students and generate a number that would make all of this sound very impressive. But when you look at the first prophecy that's mentioned there, Micah 5.2, this tags all of the three bases I mentioned earlier. This is a prophecy that was understood entirely differently by the authors and the original audiences. The fulfillment of this prophecy in Jesus only works based on a first century CE reinterpretation of this prophecy. And this prophecy is only fulfilled in the retellings of this story by later authors who are crafting their narrative precisely so as to have Jesus fulfill this prophecy. Jesus was actually most likely born in Nazareth according to the majority of critical scholars. The notion that he was born in Bethlehem was a later literary creation intended precisely to fulfill the first century CE reinterpretation of this prophecy.